Okay, it's 12 o'clock, so I'll call them in order. Um, number two on the agenda is the staff clerk will administer the oath of office to all duty board members. Everybody stand, please. Raise your hands. Repeat after me. I hereby solemnly swear. I hereby solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. I support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. The Constitution of this state. The Constitution of this state. Faithfully discharge the duties. Faithfully discharge the duties of the Downtown Development Authority. Of the Downtown Development Authority. Of the City of Manistee. Of the City of Manistee. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I further hereby certify. I hereby certify. certify. That I have not violated, that I have not violated any of the provisions, any of the provisions governing municipal elections, governing municipal elections, as provided in Article Two, as provided in Article Two of the Charter of the City of Manistee. Of the Charter of the City of Manistee. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Should everybody sign up? Yeah, that'd be great. Right after. Oh, right before. Um, number three, approval of the agenda. Um, I'm going to withdraw my resignation. So, so we could remove okay. that from the agenda. Yes. Yes.
making possible the marinas, boating facilities, and ancillary businesses that to this day, 50 years later, continue to be a prominent economic boom to Manistee. The second gift also handed to us is the MR TMA. The Act allows municipalities to authorize consumption in a public place. End of argument. It's allowable. It's city council's choice. I suggest that Manistee get out in front of this and seize the vanguard. We had the extraordinary opportunity, opportunity to become the regional mecca of acceptance if we seize the lead. Or we can be an also ran, allowing other some some other municipality to grab the spotlight and all the low hanging fruit that would come with it. If Manistee chooses to seize the vanguard and the first headlines that will come with it, letting it be known that we are law friendly, they will come. By making the fine for public use negligible rather than punitive. Manistee will become overnight a destination again. The market is huge and immediately available. An eager, ready, willing, and pent up market in quest of a friendly space. The impact and response will also be huge and immediate. You're going to have your hands full trying to hold on. But harness that siege moving upriver with all that pent up force behind it and you will have established an economic force that will live on for 50 years from now. Please do not turn aside this economic gift. Be not only on the correct side, the historically correct side, but on the economically correct side. Be the vanguard, Harvey Diem. Winston Churchill said, difficulties mastered are opportunities won. People have been trying to get this enacted for 50, 60 more years. And it took a grassroots movement of the voters to get this law in place. What I seem to be running into is fear. I'm talking to business people downtown and other associations. Fear of change, a pragmatic fear that this may somehow negatively affect their businesses. Some of the octo nanogenarian business you might lose is going to be more than made up for with this ready, willing, able, pent up market in quest of a friendly space. The inevitability of marijuana consumption becoming as widely and socially acceptable as alcohol is undeniable. It's a plant and much less devastating than alcohol. We don't see people losing their families and jobs due to their marijuana addiction. So why all the hubbub? Why all the fear? I'm not sure why we would even consider continuing this prohibition, which is what this is. I think we should adopt a little PT Byron here and grab that marketing branding opportunity. You let people know they're welcome, they will storm us down, throwing their money at us, just like they did, just like the fishermen did. And I suspect, you know, once the headlines get out here, that this little West Michigan town is open and friendly and progressive, that some of the uh, likely things that people would be thinking is, I'll support that. That's worth supporting. This looks like a progressive community worth investing in. Let's check it out. We'll spend a couple nights in town, restaurants, hotel, 
legal liquor, liquor establishment. We got to check this out. And again, there's the eager, ready, waiting market. It will rush to the community that makes them welcome. I just think. Don't think. Don't blow this off out of hand. This is worth considering. I mean, the potential is just enormous. But we have to grab the vanguard, the headlines. And we will have the headlines. Yes, right now, Manistee seems to be out in front of us, judging by what the communities around us are doing. Everybody's talking about it. I'm sorry, we used it up. Public, public comments, five minutes, and we appreciate it. And we haven't had any um, business or any discussion on marijuana because nothing has been brought to the DBA's attention of anything that is happening in our downtown. But I think if it was that um, the board would be open to discussion. Um, but as of right now, there just hasn't been any any conversation because there hasn't been a business or developer that has expressed that interest right now in our downtown. But I think that we would be open to talk about it if, if the situation came up. So it would take someone expressing an interest in putting a, a retail shop downtown before any of this is acted on? I don't know what, what how our city council feels about it and what's going on there. So I think that myself, along with other board members, would have to be a little bit more educated on it and um, discuss it or find out what city council's take is on it. Well, I can tell you what the take has been so far, but uh, again, there seems to be this fear and just, I think most of the council realizes that, that this is the right way to go, that this is, well, I haven't actually done this with city council yet, <clears throat> but I think most of them, their conscience tells them that this is the proper thing to do. Well, thank you for your public comment. Thank you for your time. Is there any questions? Thank you for listening. Yes, any questions? No, are you Mike Herbert? Yes. Yeah. Just for so thank you. Yeah, it is. I can. Thank He's you. He's got it. You're popular. <laughs> thank, thank, you. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Any more public comment? Okay, then we'll be done. Approval of March 13th, 2019. Yes. Yes.
time he has records for. So, and also in Connie's email, it, it it wasn't really clear to me what if any actions were going to be taken. She used the word if. If these funds are from the previous year, we could in next year's audit do an adjustment. But it, to me, it's quite clear that they are the previous year, or not for the previous year, based on the deposit detail. So I was curious why she said yeah. So we'll look again, right? Let's see. Oh yeah, it looks as though if the revenue does belong to the current year, the other suggestions of moving it forward and adding the footnote to the current year. Yeah. Uh, I can try to get more explanation. And, and I mean, the deposit detail, says 2018 summer tax from July 16th through July 31st, which is this fiscal year. So I don't, see, I don't know why there's a hit there. So, but that answered my question, seeing that documentation to me it clearly indicates that it was classified in the wrong fiscal year. And that's why our revenues this year are so much down because we put them into last year. Yeah, but, but then the auditor's response was he's interested in some other $10,000 amount that helped with that part. It goes before kind of yeah, yeah, and it's difficult for me to answer these questions. I just, I just don't have any background with it. Um, so, I mean, I think, you know, I, I wrote a few notes about between the February and the March uh, financials, you're, you're, you're pretty much on target for it. You're a little bit under in your revenue, and your expenses are a little bit over, but some of that is just due to some things that get skewed because you pay, I think you pay $40,000 to the city. If you were to accrue that over 12 months, it wouldn't, you, your numbers wouldn't be off that far, but um, I, I think you're... Uh, but I guess if this if is not an if, and it those funds were put into the wrong fiscal year, there should be an adjustment in our current year to reflect that. I don't see anything that says that that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'll ask well, you. Right. 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 If you're satisfied with this money, you can move forward yeah. with that. And if there's the question on the $10,000, if I can assist, by, I can leave it at contact our bank. Or our previous account. Yeah. Well, it should. <laughs> <laughs> should. Okay. I'll work for Tom. So, what's the motion and by whom? I think the motion you need is to approve the February and March financials if you're okay with it. We didn't approve the February last month. Well, we need. We have two different items. One is the February financials. And the second, right now, we're at the February. Right. So, is there a motion? I'll move to approve the February financials as presented. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Then we have a roll call for this. It's financials. Very good. We never Okay, review and approval of March 2019 financial statement. I move to approve the March financial statement. Any Sorry. discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Who seconded? I think it's Roger. Roger. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Review and but Then I think, per what our treasurer has said, is I would like to make a motion that just the current year financials in the amount of $36,514.25 based on the documentation that was provided in the packet that shows that that amount was applied to last fiscal year when it should have been applied as revenue to this fiscal year for $10. Barry, are you, doing this in, are you doing this in the same motion? No. no that's okay, so that's a separate All right, so in the next. Yeah, just say that. $36,514.25. That will be prepared. 
to fund the, it's that line. Up. Expenses for these big events. 
but it's, it's not right. I think we did. I think we did put more money in. It's not like we can't not pay for something we've been obligated to from months ago, <laughs> and it's not that we can't afford it, but we do need to better be understanding. I just wanted to make sure I didn't charge that thirty-five. I think it's in the right spot. And, and I think it is in the right spot. And my right understanding stop. is that we have. I don't know why we budgeted 8000 but we pay the city to basically do the labor and installation, but we purchase materials. And it used to be that both of those were done under $8,000, but over time, that's not been the case. And since we're under discussion of this item, I do want to also add that there was a period of two or three years where we contracted this out to a third party to do the installation. Um, so, I mean, I think we still should pursue that option if costs start escalating um, to a point that it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. budget in front of me that we spent in the city just this past week, but I think it just seems like we, we put 13000 in that land. So it might be a different plan. So there's a motion on the table. And there's support. Any more discussion? All in favor? Uh, that's financials. So we have to roll call it. Uh, Brooks? Yes. Deponio? Yes. Uh, Lansky, yep. Weil? Yes. Bergstrom? Yes. Moser? Yes. Taxiadis? Yes. Goodman? Yes. Thank you. Motion approved. Okay, committee reports, Tom? Um, I don't really have anything to add except for one uh, small item. You, you all received a copy of the report. And hopefully, if you have any questions on that, I can answer them now or I can answer them anytime. Um, there's not much more to add. That's pretty, pretty much what I've been working on for the last month. Um, the city council, I talked to the city manager this morning, and the city council is having a work session after their regular meeting next Tuesday to only talk about the DDA budget. So they have invited us to attend. What I think is that, Tom? Next Tuesday after the city council meeting, which we don't know exactly when that will be. That will be 16th. 16th. 16th yeah. at 7 o'clock is when the meeting starts. I'm not sure how much will be on your regular meeting agenda, but then I, okay, so then after that, they're going to have a meeting just to talk about the DDA budget. Um, I can be there. But it would be helpful if someone else from the board might be there. There might be some questions that I can't answer. I mean, I put the budget together and we discussed it, and I got a little bit of a pretty good handle on it, but there might be some other things. So if anyone else can attend, um, that would be helpful. So that's next Tuesday, the 16th. And then tomorrow, I'm meeting if anyone has any knowledge. Uh, Tyler actually met with me just before the meeting. Um, I, I received a call from someone on River Street that is looking to put to, to get a redevelopment liquor license. I worked at the tail end of that with the Vogue, and Tyler wasn't wasn't really familiar with it all that much either because he only worked with the Vogue at the beginning stages of it. And so he gave me a little bit of information, but and I looked online too. And he gave me the liquor license guy's name from the state. And so I'll, I'll do my best working with that person tomorrow, but I'm going to be kind of not much better than, than her. You know, and we'll just I can follow our way. So if anybody has any information on that, that would be helpful to me. So. It sounds like it needs to go to the city first. It needs to yep. go to, there's an application the DEA put together. Yes. And that application needs to be filled out, sent to the city police chief, and then from there it goes to the city. Mm -hmm. Then it comes back, and then all the DEA really has to do after that is provide the the district boundaries, the, the, the affidavit, and the thing, I think, you know, that I can help them all the way. So, 
Okay. I think I've got a little bit of a handle. When we've gone through these in the past, one of the most time consuming has been the amount of investment that has been done in the district. Hopefully we've got a good handle on that from the last <coughs> Molly, Molly Whetstone, the assessor, gave me one for both. I that was only a month or two ago, so I'm sure I can, if this goes quickly for them, um, which I'm not sure if it will, uh, we should be able to use that same. Yeah, same after the yeah. last um, redevelopment liquor license, there was still um, uh, plenty of uh, investment available for additional licenses. Well, the investment that Molly gives me is like $2.5 million, so I mean, it's, it's a lot. It's more than that now. Uh, I'll work with you, Tom, on that. Okay. She's meeting with me tomorrow, so I'll meet with her tomorrow. That's all I have unless you have questions. Any questions for Tom? Okay, design, Barry? Um, we met, I guess, now last month, um, and basically there's a number of items in our new business that will be talking about, so I won't really go into any of that because we'll talk about all of those items separately. I mean, I, I don't really think at this point I have anything to add beyond what's in the minutes. Who has any questions? Any questions for Mary? Okay, Murphy, promotions of chair, business development, Mallory? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, if people have specific questions, I did include a in your packet, a little brief summary of the survey that was sent to business owners and what the reports on there. So, um, based on how many surveys were sent out, that would be I mean, the survey data statistically valid. You'll notice that some of the questions are omitted, and that's because we had some, if you are a retailer, answer these questions and they weren't responded to. We don't know if it was a glitch in the survey or just people. The more questions you ask, um, sometimes the more people opt out. So I think simple is better. And if we do it again next year, which I, I think we should, we'll simplify the survey. If anybody needs us to dig in further or has any specific questions, I can just say, look, contact me, let me know, and we'll dig into the document, the instrument, and find out the answers for you. Um, and we're moving forward this far. Any other questions? Yeah, actually, I would like to talk with you about a couple of the uh, survey items. I was a bit, uh, um, had questions about what people, what was driving people to answer in a certain way. Uh, primarily, it was related to um, developing uh, vacant um, uh, upstairs in buildings. Yeah, we can actually get. Yeah. I don't need to. No, I just want to understand. Is there any explanations? Did the survey allow no, for explanations? Yes, it did, but there's very little comments. I know what you're saying. There's very little comments. I mean, again, if you have specific questions about a question, we can get you the comments and provide more information. I'd like to know why they don't take downtown dollars. Well, and why there's not interest in um, redoing their apartments or the upstairs space. Some were services. Well, a lot of these people were responding to service providers. Mm -hmm. So they're not a building owner? Correct. <clears throat> yes. Um, you have to look at the people that respond. That's to what I sensed right, in looking at the survey that uh, there were, there were not property owners, instead, there were. Um, Others. There were quite a few building yeah, owners, sure. though. There, there was, was some, yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but again, any specific questions, I'd be happy to entertain. I, I think, and I could be wrong, but I think the reason why downtown dollars are accepted is it's just not promoted. I think, I, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe the new person needs to go down and explain. I, I, I've talked to a few people who say, I don't do it because I mean they think they seem to think it's a complicated matter and it's 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 not it's it's just like going to the I mean when you take your deposit to the bank you take your, your downtown dollars to the bank same thing. So. Mm -hmm. 
And we would suggest there were people that said that they were interested in them, so possibly you know, not to burden Tom with it now, but when if we may, we had our first time person fairly quickly. I think that's one of the first things we should do is talking around is have a list of kind of options, and that would be included, including the downtown dollars. Anything else, Valerie? Okay, redevelopment. Uh, I have nothing. Recruitment. Um, the hiring committee have three candidates that they are going to interview next week. The process is that they will interview. If there um, are two that are equally qualified, um, the hiring committee will take the next steps and either ask the the two candidates to um, do a presentation to the board or um, answer a question in a written format. Um, that's only if, the, if there's two candidates that are equally qualified. And um, right now, the interviews are set up and we have three for next week. Economic development, Karen? Um, I just kind of wanted to get some clarification on this. Um, we did the RFI in regards to what we're going to do in economic development. I don't recall seeing the responses. There was only one. We didn't get it. The chamber was the only one. Okay, so that wasn't forwarded, though, to anybody. Yeah, I thought I, I did, but maybe I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see that. So. <clears throat> I believe you did. It is the. Um, I, I didn't see that. I don't recall it. See. So, um, you know, I'm kind of thinking, where where is this going? I mean, we we gave a recommendation. Um, we met with um, the chamber. We talked about other entities at Carver City, kind of looking at Carver City and what other people are doing. So, tell me what's going on now at this point. I guess I'm not sure where to go. Is the recruitment committee proposing? I'm not sure where it's going. What do you what? I, we made a proposal for the RFI. Wanted to look at doing a contract service. So has the recruitment committee met? We have not done it. For the economic development committee met. That was the last recommendation that we did. We gave the RFI. We put that out, and there's been nothing since then. Okay, so Tom, can you forward to the recruitment committee the it's economic for economic <laughs> And that's that's which which is uh, Karen Barry and Valerie now. Anything else? Well so the board, the recommendation we made, we gave the RFI, all that information, the, the somebody at the executive group which you're on to looked at that. So is there any discussion? Is there any idea? Is there any what it just was. I personally thought that that's what the economic development committee was working on then to come back and make the recommendation on what to move forward with. We made a recommendation for the RFI to be completed after the RFI. But what she's saying is she has never given the results, so how can you send the results to the economic development committee? Right. And, and, and I'll just add, since I had a conversation with the Chambers Board Chair this morning, they are still interested in pursuing um, follow-up with us on their proposal. And they have, I have participated in some economic development <coughs> activities with the Chamber record there with some developers and I was invited to a couple of meetings and uh, so they're already kind of doing that somewhat without an actual person I mean through Stacy but um, and also in the budget you addressed it by just putting a lump sum for I mean you've got a hundred and ten thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars in the budget that's that's really there for however you decide make your organization work, whether it's the part-time person and a contract, or a part-time person and another part-time person, or, or whatever. Um, that money is there 
for that purpose. So you can move that money in the personnel area anywhere you want. So. Well, has the chamber <coughs> provided a proposal to in response to the RFI, or are we all referring to the uh, business plan that uh, they had and they provided to us? That's what was provided. That's what they provided. Okay. Right. I just want to make sure I didn't miss something. Anything else, Karen? No. Rachel? Yes. I'm still confused. Under new business from last month, discussion of strategic planning documents and matrix, we're still going to need to discuss that. We decide how we agree as a board. Aren't we even moving ahead? What are you doing? Oh, I was under new business 9A from last month. <coughs> Okay, are we done with um, items? Uh, no. Okay. Sorry, right. I just finished up my card. Go ahead. Okay. 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 We'll Sherry's comment to is going to the minutes from the last meeting right, but on this general topic. Addressing Karen's concerns about where are we, and it seems like we still have not finished business. Well, we have the special meeting that we were supposed to talk about it. Um, which we had the budget that lasted an hour and then some people only allocated two hours to that meeting, so we didn't have <coughs> that. We never really got it, but we did decide, as I recall, that we would move forward with the candidates yes. that we had. Oh, it's independent of you. Yes. So I guess to me it's a little bit if you listen to Karen trying to figure out, <coughs> excuse me. I think we can talk about it more under the business and maybe after this okay. presentation. All right. Anything else? Okay, Tim, Tom. Um, the, the TIP committee here, the TIP plan is actually moving forward pretty well. <coughs> it's, it's not super fast, but it's, it's moving. Uh, John Angeli from Beckett Raider has been helping us. The last time the TIP committee met, they met with the city manager, the city finance officer, the city attorney, um, and the public works director. Had some good discussion about maybe including in the plan a, a way to handle maintenance. You know how that $22,000 figure always gets discussed every year. Perhaps putting something in there, a number in the, in the plan somewhere that then would be increased by COLA annually and reviewed every few years. That's kind of been discussed and it's not in the plan right now but the plan was then sent was some changes were made to the plan the plan was sent back to me I submitted it to the committee and to the city the city reviewed it I met with the city manager late last week and the city manager uh, went page, we went page by page all the things that he saw in there some were just typos some were more a little more than just typos and um, all those were brought back, were sent, were given to me. I then sent the committee and John Ackelangeli uh, a, a, a lengthy email explaining page by page every change that was made. John Ackelangeli is now emailing back and forth on a couple of small, on a couple of items, which I think is good. There's some communication between the city and the consultant on that. Um, and T has has uh, has sent said a couple of things about it also. So we're in that process right now. I think the next step is probably to, for the committee to meet again, and hopefully we'll have a final document and it can be submitted to the city. I think we're that close. Maybe Barry doesn't agree, but <laughs> I think we're, I'm trying to think that we're close. In an ideal world, yes, but I think <laughs> there's some weeds that have to be dug through on this. I think we're a lot closer than we were three or four months ago. Yeah, we were, <laughs> we're past really the minutia. I think we're, but I think there still is coming I mean, to an agreement on. And part of it is is going to be the definition of what maintenance is. Some of the um, comments in the city manager review um, relate to that, and that's really the heart of you know that. $22,000 currently, the city wants, is requesting more, and it really fits into 
what is the definition of maintenance? So and I think we have to come out of this with that question answered. Otherwise, we haven't, we're still at the same point we've been in the last decade. But I, I agree, Tom. Everything is moving forward. People are working together, and it's it's a much more pleasant environment than it has been. It's been <laughs> adversarial in the past. It's not that way right now. Any other questions? organization wanted to conduct an event that was sponsored by the DEA. Um, and I think Frostbite has kind of been an example of where that came up, where others had agreed to do it, and then they looked at the insurance implications of doing it and said, oh, we want that to be under the DEA. But what criteria, if an organization comes to us and says, we want to do this event, we can't afford our own insurance, we'd like the DDA to partner with the DDA on this, what does that entail? And I, that was my understanding as a task with that. And they all put together a form, which, again, that was another thing that was presented, but we didn't go anywhere, so. Okay, I guess I don't I recall seeing form, that. I put a detailed plan together that said that every item should be first A budgeted, that needs to include. Would you like us to bring well, has that, that? Has that come to, to the board? It was probably back in the I don't summer. recall it. Right, yeah. it was quite a while ago. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Generally, the first recommendation yeah. has to be budgeted. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but by see. definition, if it was a third party event, that wouldn't be a budget in the bank. Yeah. They would have to come to us very early. And I mean, I set some timetables. If you'd like, I can okay. send you the information. I, I, or maybe I, we should review it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even remember seeing this, so yes, I would. Yeah, I would. I would. Let's distribute it again I and have a conversation. Oh, it doesn't, I don't think, really need to be a community at this point. I mean, it's like it's just going to be a part okay. of our process. Can you just email out the packet that you get? The packet. Okay, I can do that. I, I set aside it will you know, be, a lot of recommendations. Like they, they need to be aware of our financial policy. They need to follow all the guidelines, mm -hmm. etc. So I can send you the packet. So okay. we'll keep you guys on the agenda so we can talk about okay. that. Okay. okay. Um, rising tide. Um, I no longer attend the rising tide meetings. Barry is going to start going to them. If you and there was one this morning. Okay. Um, Well, my notes <laughs> from that meeting. Um, so I'll, I'll, these steering committee meetings are really more just getting status updates on the various sub-projects. And I know it's been mentioned, but the four sub-projects are housing, poor governance, um, economic development, and uh, branding. And so we got updates on all of those. We had actually two of the consultants, who are actually in the audience here today, um, <laughs> on economic development and the branding initiative um, were there and kind of, for me it was introductions since this was my first meeting attending um, the steering committee. But just kind of quickly, um, on the housing, the, their, the scope of that initiative is not huge because there have been recent housing studies done for the area so there's not a lot of need to reinvent the wheel um, but there is going to be some focus on education so they're looking at um, putting together some sort of community event to kind of get kind of a lot of the whether it be people on council who've heard presentations or you know, elected officials 
knows a lot of this information, but it really hasn't gotten out to the public, and there's a lot of misinformation going around the public. So trying to really educate. Um, on board governments, there was a survey sent out, and I think we finally got in the loop on that last week. Um, so if you haven't already responded, please do. Um, a new item that was brought up this morning that kind of is outside the four main areas is um, Lizette, our you know, fellow on Rising Tide, is recommending that post her one year um, stint in this project that the community hold together a group, a leadership council or something along those lines that really kind of tries to maintain some of the momentum keep the conversations going, um, maybe provide a little bit of vision. Um, and there was a recommendation from the county board chair that maybe the existing intergovernmental um, group that meets once a quarter maybe be expanded to take on that role. No decisions were made, but there was discussion on that. Uh, on the economic development front, I'm sure Joe will give us um, a recap on, on everything that's there, so I won't really touch on that. On the um, branding, that's that initiative is really kind of kicking off a lot today. Um, the steering committee is meeting, or the subcommittee is meeting for the first time today on that. And um, and as far as timelines um, for the economic development piece, um, the consultant is planning on having. His goal is to have things wrapped up by the end of this month. Um, and for the um, branding, mid to late next month. So these initiatives are, the plan is to move fairly quickly now that the resources are here in place and focusing on us. So that's my synopsis of this morning's meeting. Any questions or comments? Okay, old business, bylaws. Um, so just so the board is aware of what is happening at the city council level. So as was mentioned <coughs> to us last week by um, the council member Linda Beaton, um, council had a work session for us last month, but we weren't aware of it, so we didn't show up. But as part of that work session, um, council has been talking a lot about how the DEA fits into the bigger picture. And in their last week's meeting, they talked about us again, and there was an agenda item on council's agenda for them to change their appointment for their representation on this board from the mayor to the city manager. And council approved that change. So it is council's intention that the city manager be the purpose, the person representing the rest of the city as it relates to our direct involvement. There's some detail work that needs to go through. Um, our bylaws conflict with that. Um, city council guidelines conflict with that. But the biggest one is actually the city ordinance for the DDA. Um, conflicts with that desire, and an ordinance change is a little bit more cumbersome process. Um, so, you know, I don't see a reason not to make this change to our bylaws today, just get it out of the way while the city works through the other documents. I think it would be good for us to have a bylaws committee and actually look at more detail, because I think there are some things in our bylaws that don't necessarily accurately reflect how our organization works today. Um, but I don't think that means the changes that council is really indicating they want us to do, I don't think we need to wait for a bylaws committee to make a more all-encompassing set. So with that in mind, I have a suggested set of about 10 words of changes that the board could consider if they wanted to today. Very uh, point, of, point of order. That we can't change, arbitrarily change the bylaws without public, without it goes to this board twice for a meeting. I mean, this is just not something we can do. Our, 
I think the bylaws committee needs to get together before we change anything and I'm not come sure back. that our bylaws state that. Robert's rules of order do. There is a bylaws committee that was established last month, I believe. Sherry, I think you're on it, correct? Yeah, and we just didn't set a time. It was right. So why don't we take this back to the bylaws committee and then the bylaws committee hopefully will meet over the next month and make a recommendation next month. I didn't hear a motion though. I mean, can we hear Mary's suggestion or his words? Are you making a motion? Well, before we do that, if it's on the board, then it's on the board. Yeah. All right. I do have a question, Barry. Was there a discussion <laughs> at council, maybe the council meetings on who is the chief executive officer of the city when there is both a mayor and the uh, city manager? Was it? There was no discussion that, okay. in the meetings that I attended, but obviously I was not at the work session Okay. where some of these things were more broadly talked about. you want me to address it? Our board was over. We have a weak problem for the strong city manager. You know, in town where you elect, cities where you elect a man, he's that, he's a strong person. Here we're here. The day-to-day -day activity that the city manager is in charge of. He actually really runs the city. He's in charge. He has more, he has the ability and has more knowledge about what, what can be done and what can't be done. Council members don't have that. And the new law allows us to, even if the bottom line was you, you said I was the executive officer, the law stated that, I can still designate someone. So that's my, that's my reason. Just for the sake of time, can we move on and have the bylaws committee come back? Do they bylaws? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do the bylaws committee, yes. Sherry? I think Sherry, Barry, I thought you were on it. Probably was. <laughs> <laughs> I think Valerie was. Okay. So we have to have two readings of the suggested bylaws changes. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. okay. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And so we want the bylaws committee to meet first. Yes. And then mm -hmm. present it to the board. Mm -hmm. And it could be a holistic approach, but so we do solve the same. There's other changes. New business design committee recommendation to allocate 4500 for parking signage. Gary or Kyle? Oh. Um, or Jerry? So. <laughs> In this current year's budget, the board has allocated $800 for parking signage. When that budget was approved, it was not anticipated that that was enough to cover the project. However, the idea was maybe we could go through the process, identify signage, and basically maybe do one parking lot. We've, at the committee level, gone through this, um, looked at some recommendations from DPW, and their recommendation is that we would just adopt a standard um, parking signage that is kind of universally recognizable, um, as opposed to coming up with our own design. Part of the reason for that is it's less expensive to use standard designs, um, and it's more universally recognizable because it's what you would see anywhere. So think block with a P on it and an arrow um, as what's being recommended. Um, Jeff McCoola has gone through the district and the city parking lots and basically identified locations um, at the parking lot entrances themselves and then indicator arrows off of River Street to indicate where those parking lots would be. Um, and his estimated costs on that project um, is $4,500, which is, surpasses our budget that we've been budgeted this year. So we're coming back and asking for an additional allotment from Unbalanced to do that, because that's a project that we could relatively quickly turn around and have in place by summer if the funds were approved.
support it or you? I will make that motion. Make sorry. It. Okay. I, I will support it. Any more discussion? Um, yeah. All right. Brooks. Um, you don't know how? Yeah. Yeah. Brooks? No. Too fast. Antonio? <laughs> yes. Lynn? Yes. Zelensky? No. Wild? Yes. Bergstrom? Yes. Moser? Yes. Taxiadis? Yes. Goodman? Yes. Motion you approve. <clears throat> Design committee recommendation to approve landscaping watering contract with the city of Manistee. Okay, in your packet was is was a copy and Tom sent out another version. The only difference between those two is this version actually has the change tracking turned on so you can see the last round of edits, whereas the second thing he sent out is just a concise document. This is essentially the contract that was proposed to DPW last year that never, we never got around to assigning. Um, it has had a number of modifications, but the basis of that disagreement is what Tyler had actually worked out um, a while ago. Um, the most significant changes, though, are the addition. You'll see that the number is 22,000, not 18,000. The addition into this agreement of having the DPW do the watering of the flower baskets, which we have um, in previous years contracted out to a third party. So that's the additional $4,000. And we've spent the last couple of years north of 5000 on that. So this is actually a savings to us for watering. Um, Everything else here are basically the expectations of what we're expecting the to um, do as part of the landscaping agreement. And I guess if anyone has any questions, or Kyle worked on this um, to a degree with Jeff Nicola. Yeah, and my, so. my only comment would be that Jeff really desired this instead of calling it a contract, he wanted to call it a memorandum. Which made sense to me because in maintenance things change along the way. And he felt like if it was a contract, he would constantly have to come back to amend the contract um, if there was anything that was made to it. And I felt comfortable moving forward like that. Although what we have is basically a contract. I know. <laughs> so um, I didn't catch that. <laughs> I don't know if it matters. I don't think it matters because Jeff, uh, Jeff was comfortable with it. Okay, so thank you. Well, I made the question. The shape. Yeah, the shape. It was, in fact, the question was going to change. It was just he didn't want to have to call it a contract necessarily. Um, but I think no matter what he's going to do, what he's going to do. Yes. yes. I'm sorry. One year, one year, and the extension. I, on behalf of the design committee, I would uh, make a motion to approve the uh, landscaping maintenance agreement um, between the DDA and the city DPW. For a fee of twenty-two thousand for twenty nineteen. Yes, that's what I put the stairs. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Wait. Doubt. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. Goodman. Yes. The taxi address, yes. Moser? Yes. Bergstrom? Yes. Wild? Yes. Tolensky? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Yvonne? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Must be approved. Uh, this, this should not be confused with the 
other 22,000 years of time. Because right. I have not used them. Right. You know? And that's okay. what I said earlier is the definition of the word maintenance, it's, it's all over the place, and that's leads part of it. So see, there was a request from the design committee to appoint Dennis Tierhorst, who's bringing me the his name, to the design committee. And as long as the design committee is fine with that, I mean, our bylaws state that the board I chair appoints Dennis Tierhorst so. to the design committee. And in case there was any uncertainty as to who is on the design committee. That's what we requested that all the names be listed so that it's in our minutes. This is who's formally on the design committee. Okay, Joe? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody doing? Those of you who don't know me, I'm going to Joe Borgstrom, a uh, slightly different, uh, you know, uh, family legend has it when the Borgstroms came over from Sweden that uh, at Hellas Island, mm -hmm. that um, the, the processors misunderstood the pronunciation, because Boistrom is, is the Swedish pronunciation of it, and that half the family was written down as Bergstrom. The other half is Borgstrom. So somewhere along the lines, we might be long <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Time for you to get before. Hey, time for me. Come on, team. All right, so obviously I've known T's for a while. T's normally not, not that big of a trick to me. But for those of you who don't know me, I've been doing uh, the doing economic development uh, strategy. Uh, my firm is placing an advisor. Uh, my background, I've worked for over 20 years doing economic development. I've done downtown redevelopment work. I've done industrial recruitment. I've worked on town uh, attraction and retention strategies. And uh, I'm here to work with the city on, on creating economic development strategy. Now, when I say I'm here to work with the city, I'm here to work with the community. Because economic development in the 21st century is a team sport. And um, if you get the MEDC's uh, website lately, they talk a lot about um, economic development has changed. I'm sure that people are really familiar with it. When I started in economic development in the early 90s, or sorry, mid 90s, um, economic development was really about that you attract the plant, people follow the plant, and that's how community started. So we grew in the state of Michigan. Um, Detroit was based on people moving up from Georgia and Tennessee and Kentucky and coming to the factory jobs. But in the last 20 years, something really different has happened in economic development, and that's we've changed the way that economic development happens. So if you look at like Google's, uh, or excuse me, Amazon's HQ2, whenever Google does any kind of searches, what they're looking for is where are the people? So economic development is now where businesses are looking for where the people are and the talent is, and so businesses follow the talent. So it's really kind of flipped in terms of how economic development works. So the NEC uses a phrase that says businesses need talent, talent needs place, and place needs business. And when we talk about economic development, I really talk about economic development, the strategy will be around five main points. So first is industry which is the traditional economic development, manufacturing, logistics, all that kind of stuff. Anything that's made or, made or sold out in the community, sold outside the community. Um, entrepreneurship is a big piece of that. So small business development, growing your own. Um, tourism is a big piece of that as well. Obviously here at Manistee, there's a huge amount of tourism that occurs over here. Talent, so workforce development, uh, population and, uh, and uh, we talked about quite a bit this morning, population attraction strategies, and then place. So downtown redevelopment is a key, is a key portion of all this. Um, and the importance of place in all this is really what I'm going to spend a few couple minutes that I have with you today. Um, the importance of downtown is that downtown in particular is the front door of the community. Um, if you, I tell you, having done industrial recruitment, the first thing in an industrial um, general manager or business owner wants to see is they want to see downtown because it's, to them, the barometer about whether or not that the community itself is healthy. Um, if you were to put a, a roof over downtown, it would be one of the largest employers in the community. Uh, we have a tendency to, to uh, say we as in the economic development industry, have a tendency to discount small business owners. Um, in the downtown redevelopment world, we understand how important small, small uh, business owners are. 
So if we were to, to take that approach and put a roof over downtown, which I would not recommend, and Steve tried it, it failed horribly. Um, but this idea of, of you know thinking about our downtowns as those job hubs, and then most importantly too, as we look at this new economic development model of you know attracting talent, downtown are, is one of the things that people look at when they when they decide whether or not they want to come to the community. So downtown plays a huge role in all of this stuff. Now when it comes to talent. You know, we really have a tendency to talk about two generations more than anybody else, right? We talk about boomers, and we talk about millennials. Those two groups, there's a reason for that. Those two groups make up 48% of the population. Now, as a cynical Gen Xer, uh, I will tell you that, you know, one of the things that, that I always think of is that, okay, yeah, yeah, it's the boomers, it's the millennials, whatever, but what happens when millennials get older, they have kids, and they have families, you know, and they move away from downtowns, they move away from, from uh, cities. Well, what we're seeing is a huge shift in, in households without children. 70% um, of households in Michigan and the United States today do not have children. That's projected to spike at 72, but stay around that 70% for the next 10 to 20, 30 years right now. Okay, when I ask people, typically when I do speeches, I talk about households without children, um, I always ask the crowd, you know, what, what do you think the percentage is? Every time somebody says 50%. And it has not been 50% since 1960. You know, so this idea that you know, we build communities with this idea of 50% of households have kids, 50% don't, hasn't been true for over 40 years, or 50 years. So the important way, well, the reason I bring that up is that the market for downtowns is incredibly strong. Um, and I think it's really important that when we recognize that as the market, as the market shifts, we're seeing boomers who are downsizing, 88% of millennials want to live somewhere walkable. That doesn't always mean Chicago, it doesn't always mean New York or Detroit. They want to live somewhere where they can live, live within a couple of blocks and be able to walk, you know, to entertainment and to dining and those sorts of things. They're more environmentally conscious than ever, so they, they recognize the uh, carbon footprint of owning a car. They want to, you know, bicycle more. They want to be more connected without having to rely on uh, engines uh, and, of course, just overall the other dependence. So the reason that I'm here, the reason that I actually want to ask the DEA for, I don't care if we do a formal meeting or some sort of uh, opportunity to sit down. I want to talk to you guys about what you see some of those challenges are. I would love to see some of the strategic planning stuff that you guys have done, uh, the, the survey work that you guys have done. Academic development, when we get done with this report, I, I want to see um, all those five areas that, that I just talked about represented. And I think that there's a, a role for the numerous organizations. I think one of the things that is a challenge around academic development is if I were to go around the room and ask everybody in the room for the definition of economic development, it would vary greatly. And I can tell you that the conversations that I've had around the state is when we talk about economic development from a downtown perspective and from a community-wide perspective, they are two different things all together. And so one of the things I want to make sure that we have with this economic development strategy is an understanding of what do we need and whose responsibility is what. Because I think a lot of times, and this happened in one of the communities I worked in recently in Charlotte, was that there were four or five organizations who were doing economic development. Well, they're doing different portions of it, and there was no coordination about who was doing what. And what happened was is that things weren't getting done because people were afraid to step on each other's toes. And I think in, in Manistee, it may be a similar case, because I think everyone has the betterment of the community in mind. So what we might have out of the strategy is to say, all right, you know, it's almost like a football play. You know, you have wide receivers, you've got tight ends, you've got running backs, you've got quarterbacks. Everyone has a different function. And so I want to make sure that everyone's aware, the organizations are aware about what those specific functions are and how they relate to each other. Now, I mentioned those five areas. Sometimes there's overlap and that there's going to be a need for cooperation and working together. Uh, we just met with the CBD as an example earlier this morning. Um, there's a lot of things that the CBD does that we can use in that talent attraction perspective. So we do see that there's an opportunity for the organizations to work together. But most importantly, as the, as, as the entities work together, whether it's the chamber, or whether it's the DEA, or it's the CDB, or whoever else, that it's a, especially from a funding me mechanism model, if you're looking at you know, the chamber, I know they've got their new economic development arm, you've got um, the CDB, and you've got the DEA, who are all funded completely differently. So it's important for those funders to understand how that works. Now the DEA, I understand your TIF. You can turn on, you guys have two mills too, right? Operating mills? No mills? No. Okay, well that's good. But the tip, at least so you're downtown property and understand what their tax dollars are going for specifically. 
And same with chamber members, those who are supporting the economic development group, and same with CB, the folks who fund CBB. It's really important for folks to understand what each organization is doing and how that plays towards the, the, the greater goal. So I know I don't have a ton of time today, but I would like to ask the board for some time at some point in the next couple of weeks. Um, when it's convenient, I'm happy to go by beers and bluefish, um, or if we have a more formal public meeting, that's fine with me either way. I don't know if we bring beer in here or not, but um, or not. Um, but I do want to to, uh, to invite the board to have a meeting more about kind of what you guys see as as what you want the DEA to be able to do in the broader goal of economic development. Joe, you just said a little while ago that. Um, by the end of this month, you are looking at um, generating some kind of guidance. Yes. Um, if the timing here may be an issue, uh, because it sounds like we're going to have to uh, schedule the time to meet. And, um, I don't know what everybody's schedule is. Um, we have um, you know, two weeks. If indeed your report or your guidance. I'm willing to put that back. That was asked for an estimate when I wanted my report. Done. Okay. My estimate was the other one. So do you want to meet with the entire board or individual members from the board? What was I, can, the I can do either way. I just want to be able to board about meeting with everybody. So I'm sorry, I mean, that's not something I plan for. I don't want it to be like, oh, it's just a secret backdoor meeting between. I just want to be able to have the opportunity to have conversations with folks. So I don't care if it's one I want, if that's going to be easier for folks. And maybe I pick a couple of days where I'm, I'm going to be here at NAMC and we just schedule one on one interviews. Or if we do you know, one larger public meeting, that's fine too. I, I really prefer to the pleasure of the board on that. I'm going to have mayors with Joe at the pitch. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can go either way. You know. Tell you what I think, regardless of who is in the room anyway. Well, it's 1.15. We could continue the conversation now. It's up to you guys. If we you have two o'clock. Is, is is, I've got 45 minutes. Yeah. If you guys want to have a little bit of a conversation now, let's have a conversation. I have a little talk. Well, I'm good either so way. So we can either continue on and go until 2 o'clock. We can schedule a special meeting because if the entire board meets, we would have to post that or we can decide to do individual interviews. I'd like to give him some input before we leave today. Okay. I have to go over to a call, but I think he gives some input to work with him. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think kind of we've kind of, of right. I think all of, all of us assumed we were going to be here till two, so ending early would be really strange for this group. Well, I'm still going to the Bluefish. <laughs> 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 I do have a question, logistical question here. Um, you talked about uh, the approach, you know, the five-point approach. Um, and because I didn't take notes of everything you said, um, you know, do you have something that uh, we can attach to the minutes? Yes, I, I'll forward you to, I, so I went through a quick presentation I okay. here. This way, I'm going to write right. the three pages. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so let, let me start and just ask a little bit about. Um, so we did a SWOT analysis. I'm sure if anybody came to that at the vote, which was really well attended. I was thrilled with that. With that turnout, we had 85 people. There were about we'll round up consultant votes in there. So you go to sit down. What was Instead that? of standing up for the next 45 minutes, you're fine. Okay. I, I'm an instructor for the RRC program, the Regional and Ready okay. program, and I'll Same do like that. a two-hour session. <laughs> okay. Plus, it gives me my standing minutes on my watch. So, okay. <laughs> um, so we, we did uh, the SWOT analysis um, at the at the Vogue, which was a great turnout. I think some really good feedback, um, and we did we just said kind of community wide. We didn't specify anything. I thought one of the one of the key interesting areas that folks with the community recognized was with a number of vacancies in downtown, as an example. Um, and I did give the update this morning, and, and I was asked some of my concerns. Uh, I will tell you a little bit about the data uh, for your community. Your community skews older, uh, significantly older than the state average, which in northern Michigan, that's ten, that tends to be 
the case. Um, you guys have to skew a little bit older than the rest of northern Michigan. So the state average is about 45 years. Let me just ask you, sure. do you think that's maybe related to the community branding that we've had, Victorian Port City, which I think we've kind of viewed ourselves as this retirement mecca. Well, but and, now and, we have no workers to actually. Well, and you can retire at Mecca is okay as long as you leverage that. Matter of fact, so you bring up marketing branding. I forgot yeah. to make sure I introduce the guy who's actually trying to get some work done. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, ben Muldrow. Ben Muldrow is with our Ben Muldrow Associates. They're going to be actually working on the community branding portion of this. He is a good friend and a longtime partner working on a lot of stuff together. Um, so feel free to chime in too as we go. Um, but yeah, if we don't leverage that distinction as a retirement community, if it's not designatedly kind of called out, then there are business attraction strategies around retirement communities, none of which have been employed. So I think that's part of the challenge. So if you've got an older community, that's fine. You do, the, the industrial side misses out on workers. Um, I think that there's an opportunity, we talked a little bit about this, this morning, of converting tourists to residents, and that can help them on that front. Um, but I, I think, by and large, you're looking at that, that going back to statistic real quick. So 45 years is your average age here in the area. In Michigan, that average age is about 40 years. In the US, it's 35. So you guys are 10 years above the average, which, again, is OK as long as we think about that in terms of a strategy for retail recruitment. So leading into retail recruitment, we looked at your, some of your uh, statistics on retail leakage. and. It's an interesting dynamic because I think you have more retail available than what the existing um, residents can support. And the reason that is is because you have a high seasonality in terms of seasonal residents. Those aren't counted in your normal census data. Uh, but the challenge with that is, and the benefit, frankly, because I don't have to get for small local businesses, is that chains have a hard time looking at that. I think there's been more effort in putting in getting a mire here, say, necessarily, that it would be to help support small businesses. And I really think that a focus of um, the economic development strategy on our retail recruitment basis should be helping them fill the storefronts. That should be the primary retail activity um, for the community. Now, that being said, go ahead. Could you interrupt? Could, uh, sure. There's a common question I almost wanted to ask this morning, too, is you talk about recruitment, but how much effort needs to be on retention? Basically, strengthen and build what we have. But we need to before this meeting, just so we can clear. Because if we have strong businesses, they become our best spokesmen. Absolutely. So, so, attraction is the thing that people want to talk about. Retention and expansion is where a vast majority of business goes. So, there's really a couple of prongs that we talked about kind of the old style of economic development, which is, um, the, sorry, let's say old, the traditional style of economic development, which is attraction, retention, and growing your own. Now, retention growing your own doesn't get a lot of publicity, but that's where I think a lot of the focus, that's where I was going with a little bit of the retail uh, leakage example, is you know, if you're going to talk to a chain retailer, they're not going to have much interest in looking at the demographics of Man State. However, if you talk to someone who vacations here and has a retail store somewhere else, that this may be more attractive to them. Or talking to some of the existing business owners who may already have one storefront who may be looking at a second storefront. I think you're finding way more success with working with those locally owned businesses who are already here helping to attract in, in, those standpoint, in that standpoint. When it comes to that, you have a lot of vacancies in your, in your downtown. And I don't think all of them can be absorbed by either attraction, and you have to do a little bit of growing around. We, talk, we, we did a little bit of brainstorming this morning's meeting and talked about the idea of cutting down some of the, the retail square footage on the front ends of the building and being able to use that, you know, essentially splitting up. The, the first floor retail is to make that a smaller square footage so you can increase the number of turns, the lower the overhead, the needed inventory to maintain that retail space. Uh, and then be able to use the back side of that square footage as an example for office. And that has a great example of a place, and I can't remember, what was the town with the archery? They had, they had an archery store in the front, and they had a, a Pearson place in the back. Somewhere in Mississippi. Was it Mississippi? <laughs> that so, like that. And, where you can do and that? actually, to that point, there's actually an example of that right now going on in our downtown. Um, city zoning administrator emailed Tom and me on this topic where there's a property that's kind of pie shaped, so at the front it's very narrow and it gets bigger. And their whole plans are to turn the back into their residence. Oh, as a front. Zoning prohibits that. 
I can understand wanting to prohibit that on a first floor, on a first floor basis. Right. But in that particular case, as long as yes. it's the back half, you don't want residential right. in the front half of the retail. Right. Right. But even then, I think you still want to try to promote office for that back half, so you're still having a commercial property, you know, using that. But do the data show that there is uh, demand for office space? We haven't looked at the at the at the office um, consumption space. I think honestly, if you want a much cheaper look at that. Talk to some of the real the realtors because my guess is there isn't a ton of office space available for one, and that two that it's not my fault. I'm so to find some right now. It's it, just it's very difficult. It's the that the quality, the quality, and the building. I mean, there's no, there's there's open buildings, but they're not set for office. So you know, with a couple of relatively minor tweaks, as long as the zoning allows that. You can put up a you know a wall or even you know, a half you know like a three quarter wall that doesn't quite get to the ceiling, but be able to throw up a, a temporary wall so to speak, and then be able to split that space up. You can then you know, encourage more micro retail on that front on that front portion, and then still have an active back part of that. So as a because as a building owner, you want to maximize the amount of rent per square foot that you have, and in a lot of you guys are actually are pretty good in terms of having a decent number of your upper floor active, which obviously lessens the burden on the mortgage. Sorry, getting really wonky. You don't have to talk to people who understand the wonkiness of this. Um, so as you as you lighten that burden on the mortgage with those upper floor activity, then that you know allows you more flexibility on the first floor. But if you could have more flexibility on the first floor, or if that's currently the, the portion that's carrying the mortgage in the building, that then all of a sudden that makes it a lot more feasible to be able to do that. So if you can, if you're allowed to kind of split that up a little bit, so that was way more me talking than you guys talking, and that wasn't my intention, um, but. Uh, I'm curious to hear from the board what you guys feel are some of the, what we think the biggest strengths are of the down. I hate going, the, everyone wants to talk about the negative stuff first, but I want to talk about what you guys think is the best parts about downtown Manistee. I don't got my water bottle over there. Thank you. 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 More traditional look. <coughs> I agree with Karen on that. A lot of my customers and visitors say that also that our downtown is charming because of the historic aspect of it. Which sometimes is a blessing and a curse. Right. Because um, in my mind, the historic um, architecture, the historic character of the downtown is a major asset and it's an economic asset. Um, however, the um, property owners who have to uh, repair, maintain, or uh, try to redevelop an uh, unused or vacant portion of the building uh, feel uh, different because there is a cost to that. And, uh, and the cost is uh, proportionally higher than it would be, say, somewhere else in the city, where there is no historic building, it's not sub subject to uh, the Secretary of Interior Standards. Nor is it eligible for tax credit either. Well, the issue is that those are too small, too small projects to qualify them, because the number of the, the, number of the buildings, the rehabilitation of the buildings would qualify but you know what the, the process is so cumbersome with part one and to three. An inexperienced building and owner who's a correct. local person just right. doesn't have the skills. So, so one of the things we, we, we talked about is in looking for uh, economic development capabilities for the downtown, you know, that person needs to be able to, to among other things, to understand the standards, the programs, you know, the restoration programs, so that he or she can work with the property owners to make it to make the process easy. Um, but there's no question about it. I think that's one of the major assets that, uh, and I think the um, the uh, frontage uh, on the um, on the channel. The river uh, on the water, I think that um, it's a 
the, 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 the north side of the River Street buildings are um, a major underutilized under um, asset. And uh, as part of our um, uh, planning, and we have uh, a couple of programs that were looked at to uh, enhance or help owners with enhance and utilize that, uh, that, that portion of the downtown. But uh, again, it comes down to having someone who understands the relevant programs to help the owners with that. I think it's also positive that we we have removed, and this was decades ago, our parking um, meters and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yes. Free parking downtown. Personally, I like the one way. You know, I always, when I grew up here, so I've always thought that was great. Well, you know, it's a standard consulting move. You're supposed to come in, right? If there's one way, you're supposed to come in and recommend two way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we yeah. still enjoy people consults. that make the right hand turn and go down. We're pretty good. for us. Was, <laughs> oh. An opportunity that I think we have, and I think that we as a board recognize this in our previous strategic planning exercise when we went the last time we kind of really spent a lot of time on this where we identify the redevelopment of upper stories for residential as being very synergistic with you know, the development of the character and just vitality of the downtown. Unfortunately, we have not made much progress on it. Um, we went through, we identified, I think, probably 14 properties that are basically vacant went to each of those owners, got initial interest, but then we started going through, well, it's gonna take some effort on your part, and you're just kind of going through some of the complexities. Basically, I think there's one that's still actively working on that. So it, it, it just, so we just have spinning our tires on that topic, but the potential, <laughs> there's a lot of housing units that could be developed, and that makes property owners more financially stable because if you quite honestly, with, that, you know, with our rents right. in the downtown, which are low, they don't even cover insurance and property taxes on those buildings. Right. You, it's a foolish investment if you're buying a building that's vacant upstairs and leaving it vacant and trying to live off the rent. And to follow on, on a various comment, we identify in the uh, about 40 to about 45 units that can be developed in the existing vacant upstairs. Uh, those are about uh, 40 to 50, 45 one bedrooms. Um, the, the difficulty we found, and that was reflected in the recent survey, is that uh, property owners don't want to bother with it. Why? Well, because the available programs to help with redeveloping, you know, the new uh, uh, well, the yes. son of Mr. Rehab <laughs> that MEDC is doing, it's a CDBC program. Right. It has the administrative hoops are just impossible. And um, so property owners don't want to deal with that. So, I was a bit surprised at this. So by the way, we just said it this morning, by the way, right? April 30th, uh, Dan Leonard and I, uh, Dan Leonard from MEDC, who's with the Community Assistance Team, and I will be doing a uh, Performa 101 for interested property owners or interested developers in the area, just to be able to help them walk through some of the, you know, get an idea of how the rental rehab program works. Uh, I know they've made some changes to it, too. I don't know if there's any. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but we're going to help, you know, perspective business owners, property owners who might want to think about buying a building or redeveloping it. How do, how do you do a pro forma? Because there's a basic lack of knowledge, not just here, everywhere. It's because it's so simple. Well, honestly, the pro forma, the pro forma is not hard. It's intimidating when you look at it, though. That's the thing. And, and if you don't do it for, if, you know, property owners typically, they do something else for a living, they, you know, they see a really cool building, they want to make a difference, they want to buy a building. And that's about the end of the knowledge. And maybe they're handy at you know their own stuff. And so just, it, to me, it's, it's part of the education process. So that's where we're going to come up and do that. Um, 
third. Since we're talking housing, I think another, and this is maybe more of a challenge, is in the buildings that do have rental units in them, a lot of those came about in previous incarnations of various programs. Um, this yeah, this yeah, organization yeah, about CD 20 years, years ago, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've right, spent right. a lot of time, but not a lot has been done to those in 20 years. So, and again, as the demographics and kind of who's looking at living in a downtown has changed, we now have our existing units kind of not really being aligned with those that are looking to live in that. And yes, we can count them as rental units, but I think we also need to think about making sure that they're aligned with who it is that would love to live in yeah, a downtown. We also want to be careful, too, that you don't want to get an influx of, say, Airbnbs, you know, people who are going to come in and just you know, do that. You know, like, that's well, do you think that's a challenge? I think it will be an ongoing challenge. Oh, yeah. Because, and I think it already is. I've got a great conversation with CBD who's already starting to talk to property management companies who are buying up, buying up what was rentals and now making them seasonal rentals instead. So that's, that has a, a direct impact on the ability to attract people. I mean, look at Traverse City. Traverse City's had a Hopefully, you guys may have that kind of issue 20 years from now, but this idea of Traverse City, like people who live in Traverse City can't afford to live in Traverse City, so they live out, you know, out farther out and they have to move in. So I think we want to get ahead of that and try to figure out you know, how, we, how do we have locally owned strategies around that. So it's you know, local business owners, local farmers, maybe even living in the building themselves. Joe, the, the issue of the, um, of the renovating apartments is very startling. A lot of the apartments that were rehabbed back in, you know, what, over 10 years ago need updating. Right. But because they were done under the old CDBG program, and now that's all we have, um, something that um, you know you and, and Dan can look, or the MEDC can look at is, after how many years can the same property take advantage of the new CDBG program, the renter rehab. Yeah, because good. technically, you cannot right. use well, the renter. Well, I'll tell you what, as, as a former state administrator, I, don't, I wouldn't want to see that article come out about how you've spent you know, money twice now on the same units. Right? But the reality is that uh, those apartments are just Well, reality is, I think part of that, too, is in that pro forma development that you're building a reserve for update. I think that's part of the education. I think sometimes people see that and go, oh, I guess it's free money. Yeah. And 10 years from now, especially if there hasn't been building turnover, yeah. that's the responsibility of the landlord to keep. Uh, I think for that, I'm trying to remember that the city has a uh, rental inspection program. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so to make sure that there's a strong enforcement of the rental inspection program for the downtown needs. Well, what's interesting on the survey that we just mm -hmm. did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, more than 70%, now we don't know if these are building owners or business owners, 70% of the people said they don't want any assistance for any apartment or development plans. But again, so those were... Yeah, we don't know yeah, if these are building owners or business owners. We need to figure out uh, who are the real responsible. We got to drill down on that. Yeah, it's yeah. super important. They don't own property. They're going to put out the property. Of course, they wouldn't want help. Well, exactly. But yeah. I would actually, yeah. in that case, even, that, even then, though, I would focus on the fact that they don't want to have to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and just, just focus on those who do. Because at that point, you have 70 at some point, even if all 70% are property owners, which I don't think they probably are, but even if all 70% are, if they see the success of that 30%, they're going to become more interested. So it's about kind of building that success. So I've got architecture, the historic character, um, the river walk, free parking, up the floor redevelopment. And I touched on it earlier, and I, I think it's been uh, an area of some disagreement is, and you even touched on it a little bit in your wording, is regional economic development needs versus downtown are different. Right. And you know, trying to understand that difference, I think, is key because, I, and I think that's where maybe we and some other organizations have been working well enough together because we just kind of. Or, or, I, I, it's the general use of, it's, honestly, I think it's the general use of economic development. Right. I think that causes probably 80% of the confusion just because of what, what does that mean. Right. Um, and I think you know one of the things that, that 
that I do as part of our business is that we actually go around the country and, and talk about our what is it what is it what does economic development mean to a downtown or major organization? And really it comes down to you know, there, are, there are three parts of it. One is market information. So that's the rental market, that's the retail leasing market, that's you know, all the data you want. So market information is number one. Number two is the retention and expansion of businesses, so business development. And then the third is real estate development. And so those are really kind of the three things that from an academic development perspective is that what a, a strong downtown organization should do. And the only reason I say downtown organization is because we're one of only three states with PDAs. So downtown revitalization is like a nationwide thing. So it takes various forms. So, you know, really it's about, in my opinion, doing those three things for downtown. Now you look at a broader regional context and you've got talent development. You've got, you know, workforce development as part of that. You've got, you know, industrial property uh, development, whether that's, you know, helping the existing manufacturers expand or attracting new ones. So there's a whole kind of other gamut on that larger spectrum. You're absolutely right. But when it comes to downtown, I think downtown's a little bit different. You know, I, I agree about having somebody, having real estate development experience. I don't know whether or not you're going to be able to find that because you're not the only ones looking. And there's pretty stiff competition. It's a pretty limited knowledge set. I mean, there isn't a ton of people with, with the knowledge set out there. It says the consultant does this really. I'm just kidding. Um, I do do it for a living, but I, I'm just saying that there's a reason we do the consulting is because there isn't a whole lot of people who have the knowledge set, to be honest. Um, but the idea is that I think it's going to be, you're going to have a difficult time finding people. It's not impossible. I'm not saying you won't. I'm saying it's going to be difficult because it just it, it's not there yet. And I think we're, we're ahead of a lot of other places in the country, but here in Michigan, I don't think we're there. I get confused over, um, when you talk about that, a town our size, do we, do we really need somebody just concentrating on this small area? For a town? So, okay, that's a loaded question. But to be honest, to be honest, I think what you need is you need the access to the to people with that expertise. So whether that's a staff member or whatever else that could potentially be, uh, I don't want to sound like I'm a consultant looking for, looking for business. Ben put it nicely earlier in a meeting with CBB is at the end of the day, none of us are here to look for extra business. We leave town. Um, so what I say is that either through staff mending the staff member or contracting with uh, with uh, either a consultant or another group to do that is a possibility. What I do think you need if for a community your size is a director who oversees the downtown on a full-time basis. You have a, a huge downtown that is larger than what the population is. Um, I'm not advocating at all that you do anything about shrinking the size of that. I think you have this tremendous asset in terms of the downtown. Um, but I, and it's not so that I give an example this morning of Kelly Mack where it was built for 25,000 people and now 900 people live there. You're nowhere near that. Um, but you do have some of, the, some of those broader issues. So you're gonna need somebody who understands that, but I still think on a daily basis to move you guys forward, there has to be somebody whose everyday job is to look out for downtown. And I think that's you know, that's for you a directorship position. That's somebody who can help coordinate all of your committees and move that stuff forward. And and who provides the um, the um, marketing support for the downtown, the development or the redevelopment support? There is not a single organization around that I'm aware of that has the capabilities to provide the services that the EDA needs and the services that the manufacturers need and the services that the rest of the city and the area need. Well, and what I think is that, what, what the, so the question of the downtown, and I'll focus on that for a second. So what, I, in my opinion, I think the downtown needs, in my, not just view in the last 60 days, but knowing you guys for about 10 years, um, in previous iterations of my, of my professional career. Um, I think you need somebody who kind of helps corral. I think what you have within the community are partner, possible partner organizations, like the Convention Visitors Bureau, as an example, on the marketing side. Um, you know, I think people have a tendency to overlook CBBs, and I mean this across the board, 
It is the only organization that does 100% of its job is marketing. 100% of it has significant budgets. What I keep right. coming back to is, is that it is going to be important, especially in the director's position in the DDA, is to make sure that we have somebody who is a collaborator, who can work with other organizations, can bring them all together to represent the DDA and to also represent and support those other factions out there that you know are also dependent on good economic development. We, are, we, we continuously kind of separate ourselves, but we really cannot survive without each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, county has to have the city, and city has to have the county. And so having a collaborator, somebody who is very well organized and can manage and has skill sets that will um, embrace and encourage instead of separate and detach um, is going to be important in our, in our new position because that person is going to be tasked with relationship building, collaborating, you know, organizing, um, and keeping it all together to the core. And everything that you just mentioned is what the hiring committee talked about today. So they, they, they run marshalling resources, not controlling resources. Well, one of, the, one of the things that, that I've seen over the past 25, 30 years that I've been around here is that red time we've had a couple agencies doing economic development, yeah. and they all seem to work not together, but apart. So what I'm saying is, well, how we how we conduct ourselves in the past, how's it worked for us? It hasn't been working very well, right. and we need to make some changes. What the changes are going to be, I think we need to have some conversations. Right. But I think if you went downtown today and you said, what do you need for economic development for this business and went to another business, and what do you need? You're going to get different answers, like you said. Right. How many different economic developers do we need satisfying those people's need and working in that area? So I would say, again, that's using economic development in a broad, in a broad sense. I think what you need is somebody who's, who helps direct the DDA on a day to day basis. And you guys have, how many subcommittees I was trying to do? Five or six. <laughs> right now they're there's growing. growing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Normally but, there's four, but right yes. now with the tip going on, it's the four So there's four, four standing and then ad hoc Yeah, right. So, so I, I think that's part of that. But I, what I do think you need is access to knowledge. So I, I think you need staff. I think you need people power to be able to help direct the downtown. But I think you also need access to knowledge, and access to knowledge can, it doesn't have to exist within the DDA. Well, my research tells me, and I refer to LP and some other areas sure. that, where they have one economic development group doing all aspects. They're working for the city, they're working for the township, they're working for everybody. Um, and it seems to be working for them, they're growing. It can, and I'll tell you, in my background, um, I was the former president and CEO of the Shiawassee Regional Chamber of Commerce, which included the Commission of Visitors Bureau, which we did not do, we were not the DDA, but we're the economic development arm as well. Um, so I have first-hand experience working with those, with those types of organizations. I think it can work. I think what can exist there, and I, what I would see as looking at, now you, put, now you really put me on the spot. So, I so. Good. <laughs> now that we're all clear. Yeah. Honestly, what I would see is probably being a best case scenario, and probably the best use of funds, is to have a director position that helps coordinate with with marketing and business development, but with a focus on business development. So retention, expansion, attraction, entrepreneurship, training types of activities for the downtown. And then looks to another entity for academic development, pro forma. So, because part of it is going to be a pooling of, of resources to be able to afford somebody to do that kind of stuff on a broader scale. And what's that other entity? It could be the chamber, it could be you could contract that out to consultants. But currently, and the way I see it, even in the near future, those resources do not exist. You mean within the, within the chamber? With the chamber or anybody else around. Sure, those, first of all, those resources who, exist. Well, who, hell, like I said, we do them. But I well, have yeah, no interest in doing it. But, I, I, but I'm, one of, I'm yeah. one of a number of consultants. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Correct. But Consultant, if we hire consultants, and there are number we can do what the special stuff that the DDA needs, you know, right. the, the historic. Right. Um, so, yeah, just for floors, um, for boards, for you know, we cannot afford to pay a multiplier of three. But here's the thing, right? So here's the thing. As needed basis with consultants, 
for having somebody in-house locally. I say locally, not in-house necessarily in the DBA. But you could pool your resources, you know, with a group like the Chamber, who with some of their resources, and, and have a bigger budget to hire somebody with those types of skill sets. In an ideal world, yes. In an ideal but world. Those resources right now don't exist. I, I don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it's cool. building. And we, we need, as a county, just signed an agreement with the uh, count, our, um, chamber okay. to do economic development, and they are developing their arm or branch of economic development. Teased but so what I'm saying is that who, who are the people that are actually doing it? I'm not talking about organizations. I'm not talking about concepts. I'm talking about show me the people who can provide the services that we need See, now. If I yeah. can, T's point is, is that as of right now, a person with a set of skills and experiences that T would like to see has not been hired. Well, and, and, not and, me, but the DDA. Well, the no, DDA. no, 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 you can't speak for me. <laughs> well, I'm talking so about the I district, I'm not saying, talking about I am the board. saying that we need to have an ability to go out and seek those individuals. I mean, again, and that's going to require again, allocation a, of dollars. Again, we have a director position that we are going to hire, and that director position is going to be the person, not this board. The board is supposed to be an oversight group, not managing the day-to-day -day operations. And so we're going to have to trust that director goes out and does the job and seeks out those other individuals like an economic development consult or whatever, you know, I think you made a very good point in saying there's business development and then there's economic development. So real and development, business development and real estate development. It is. And, and, and yeah. but yeah. also we can use the business development as part of our director position. Absolutely. And which would cut down that other contract or, or service or person or whatever that we uh, have to hire. No matter what, we have to find Somebody that's going to do the economic development. I do not disagree with you of the concept. What <clears throat> I have not seen and I do not see a plan for is an organization, an entity that can provide some of the services for us. What I see is a request or a concept where DBA, we want you to be part of that. X number of dollars, and we'll figure out how we're going to do it. Well, I think we see specific. That's probably why our positions would be different because yeah. my job and my work life is systems development. And so when I see there's an opportunity, like there is in this particular situation, I would say, How are we going to build this system so that it meets X, Y, and Z? And so we have to kind of say, and be able to say, all right, this is our idea, this is what we want, this is our outcome. Now we turn either to hire somebody to give us that or we contract with somebody to do that. But that's as far as we can go. Well, I would say, well, contract, but... Can question a bit sure. and go back to what the mayor said? If, knowing what we know about our community, if we had one entity that provided support to both the county, the city, and the DEA, what kind of staffing levels would they need or consult? additional dollars for consulting if it was a one person job. Because that's what we need to know. Will we have the manpower if we have one person? Well, I would say, without having done an exhaustive search, and I can only tell you my experience. So in, in Shiawassee County, uh, our annual budget for our Chamber of Commerce was $350,000. Um, I think that backs up. It was seven fifty, dollars um, with $330,000 a year just for economic development. So that was the industrial recruitment side, that was everything. So our total budget was seven fifty eight hundred thousand um, dollars. So on, I would say for economic development purposes, you're looking at ballparking probably between two and three hundred thousand dollars to get to the level some other communities are. Now that's communities that's seventy five thousand people in the county of Shiawassee County. Mm -hmm. you look at Lansing, that great region, their budgets are in the millions. You know, uh, Genesee County is in the millions. You know, so we're talking relative terms. But to, to your point, T, I think part of this is, is I get you want to see who. I get that. But until, but until there's a budget established, you can't have a budget established without commitment, 
you can't even ask for a seat at the table because you're willing to have, you know, have some some skin in the game. Well, it becomes a catch twenty two. What well, but I think we have to be willing to be part of the conversation and say, hey, here's our here's our skin. Here's what we're willing to, to put forward. Right. And I think it's I think honestly, in my opinion, I think it's reasonable to ask for a seat at the table. Well, five. I see the table. Too. I mean, it, <laughs> they, that, that's the thing. Like, I mean, you you can't you can't attract the. It's it's almost like we're not going to offer any resources until we see how good a resource you can attract without our resources. Where if you're willing to pull, that's where you're going to get the best talent. And if you're not willing to pull, then you're not. You know, it, that's that's what makes sense. So the best thing in the world for Manistee is to be able to have a, a versatile approach to economic development that allows you to be nimble and allows you to get the best quality talent to achieve your goals. And a responsible amount of money. You don't always want the cheapest, trust me. But they say quality, quality talent isn't cheap and cheap talent isn't quality. Well, I guess I thought it was Two to three hundred thousand. Really? Well, to right. That's a big budget for everything, not just for salary. Right. Yeah, no, that's a, no, that's definitely right. not just yeah. salary. That's right. but that's a staff of, of one and a half people. Yeah. Yeah. So and then you surprised me. So how would you recommend that he should proceed? Just to recommend it. I mean, you're getting loaded. You guys are getting, you guys are getting ready. Well, I mean, that's why you're here, right? Just excuse me. Do you not have enough information to make that decision? You know. The easy answer is no. We have a two o'clock meeting. Actually, where's our meeting? Yeah, if you guys want to go, I'll go. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, having just if people want to meet with Joe individually, I would love to see your survey results and any strategic plan you guys would have. I'd be more than happy to provide recommendations on that. Again, they're only recommendations to get consulted. So I would actually like to see the individually and then come back to the board. You can do that. I'm sure. Because that's the board because it's seven. Are you sure you don't want to come back to the board? I've got to run. Where do you do it? Good luck. What I'll try to do is I'll try to set aside a couple of days where I'm here in town. Um, so I actually have much prefer to do face to face. Uh, can you email Tom those dates? He can send it out to the entire board, then the board can perfect. contact you. Any other? I guess we. No. And then if we know those dates, we might look ahead to see when we can come back so that we're not sure. always behind the eight ball. Any public comment? Thank you, Joe. No, thank, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.